We got some great music. Ain't nothing like it in the whole damn city. The hollows speak. Me. See you at the show later. Maybe after I'm done here. All right. Don't work too hard, man. Hold your ass. Something's up. Gotcha, cocksucker. We got some great music. Ain't nothing like it in the whole damn city. The hollow speak. Community needs this place, Mr. Clay. A place for folks to forget their problems.
community needs this place, Mr. Clay. A place for folks to forget their problems and have Send supplies to Delray Hollow. I'll head your way now. See anything you need? Good timing. Yes, we're good. Call me if you need. Mr. Clay, we got some great music. Ain't nothing like it in the whole damn city. Stop. The hallowed From Mama, no more Mama's after this. There. Please, Lord, you that. help me. Never gets old. <laughs>
I've been listening in on old Charlie, and he isn't such a bad fellow. He's more of a kinder, gentler redneck. And as luck would have it, his wife is expecting. Man in that situation usually doesn't care who he works for, as long as he's still above ground. <laughs> Poor sap starts blubbering when the two of them talk about names. Right now, it's between Bo Cephas and Thomas Lee. Anyway, his guys have the church locked down, and all of them are more of the shoot first, let God sort them out variety of redneck. You get your hands on Charlie, though. He'll do what he's told without putting up much of a fuss. All your intel's been updated. You going back to the motel? After I get something to eat, I'll see you when you're done dealing with these inbred assholes. I told Richie not to put Charlie in charge of that heroin, but he insisted. not to put Charlie in charge of the heroin, but he insisted. Said he owed Charlie's old man or some shit.
I told Richie not to put Charlie in charge of that heroin, but he insisted. Said he owed Charlie's own man. Fucking hell! live long enough to raise your family okay sure thing whatever you want that's good charlie real good Send your men to the First Baptist Church. Those Dixie heathens have been handled. I'll have some of my men come right over. And thanks. your name for the record? Donovan. John. Mr. Donovan, you understand that by appearing before this committee, you have explicitly waived your constitutional rights in regards to counsel and self-incrimination. Sure. And you further acknowledge that by appearing before this committee, you agree to disclose all information pertaining to the events that occurred in New Bordeaux during the summer and fall of 1968. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't. You were an operative in the Central Intelligence Agency from 1953 to 1969, is that correct? That's right. When did you arrive in Vietnam? August of 1961. Please describe for this committee the actions you took during your time in Vietnam? I spent a couple months in Saigon. Then I was transferred to a base in Laos that was operated by the Special Activities Division. We trained and equipped the Hmong and then turned them loose on the NVA. We're running arms and supplies via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And you worked with Lincoln Clay in what eventually became the Phoenix Program. Within a year or so, Lincoln was heading up his own PRU. We'd cross over into Vietnam and locate enemy targets and either kill them or bring them back for interrogation. <laughs> Just thinking about it? Jesus Christ. You wouldn't believe the shit we did to those cocksuckers. 